This anime completely blindsided me. Like, I heard people talking about this yesterday, but when I sat down and I watched this episode, not gonna lie, it blew me away. Like, this is... Yeah, I see now why people are talking about this. I see why this was trending yesterday, and I see now why people have been, like, really asking me to watch this series and even talk about it, because, boy oh boy, Metallic Rouge is, uh, a pretty good first episode. So, let's just, let's dive headfirst into this. Let's talk about who is actually working on this. So, this is an anime original series by Studio Bones, aka, I'm gonna pull it up here, the same studio that's brought us, like, Full Metal Alchemist, My Hero Academia, Noragami, Mob Psycho, yeah, yeah, you get the point, you know, Studio Bones has a track record of making countless classic anime, anime that can be labeled as masterpiece, Mob Psycho in particular. And so when you think about that, it's like, okay, Studio Bones is a good studio, and their staff usually is very juiced. When they want to make a good series, Studio Bones can make a good series with their staff. Now, obviously, no anime is truly good unless you actually take a look at the staff. That's what truly matters. And when you take a look at actually who is working on this, like here, you know, here is the actual producer that is working on Metallic Rouge. This producer, as you can see here, He's been working on anime for a very long time. For instance, he's done Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which people in the anime community will be quick to label this as a certified masterpiece. And hell, it's literally number one on my anime list, so it just, it's clear it has a lot of weight in recognition. Noragami as well, Mob Psycho, you know, the series I was just talking about, the Cowboy Bebop, Soul Eater, yeah, you, you can just see that this individual alone, just this guy alone as the producer for the series is just like, wow, that he's a juiced individual. But then if we take a look at, you know, more staff, we're just going to look at the staff here. You know, let's actually look at the director. So this is the director, episode director, and storyboarder that is working on this series. And as you can see here, he's worked on, like, for instance, episode 13, Key Animator for Sword Art Online. He's worked on My Hero Academia's third season. He's worked on, you know, stuff like Psychopaths, which episode uh, 16 and 21, I remember those being kind of iconic. I remember reviewing those years ago when it released, to um, also Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagann, and then you have, like, stuff like, you know, Carolyn Tuesday, yeah, so the director, the storyboarder, and the actual episode director also is very juiced, but once again, if you get into the whole staff listing, like, the script writer, to all that, the episode, individual episode director, like, here's another episode director, you know, this individual has worked on a little project, like, a few projects, nothing too crazy, but overall, the staff seems to be very cohesive to the music, the people that are making the music, to just, like, the storyboarding, etc., legitimately very impressive staff listing to Metallic Rouge, and I see now why people, like I said, were requesting me to talk about this show, because it actually is a very good first episode that does leave you with a lot of mystery and intrigue and making you wonder what is actually happening within this world. Now, there is obviously, as you can clearly see from the clip here, there is action within the show. There is, you know, mecha-type designs going on here, but it's not just straight up like a mecha series. It's not like they're getting in, like, Gundams or anything like that. The characters are actually, from my understanding, actually like this because they are android slash robots. And I'll talk about that in one second, but the point of the matter is, is that Metallic Rouge has started off with quite a banger, and it being an anime original does necessarily mean that the series can go anywhere, like, you know, there is no source material that this is based on, you can check it for yourself, this is an entirely new project that Studio Bones has come up with to work on, which is very good, this means that they have creative freedom, they have creative freedom to do whatever they want, if they want to make this theoretically a long-running series to last multiple seasons, to be their breadwinner for their studio, theoretically, they could do that. They could definitely do that. I mean, I believe KyoAni at one point in time, you know, KyoAni is what it is today because they eventually started making their own originals and stuff, which allowed them to kind of be a little bit different from the normal studios in the industry. And so maybe this might be the ticket for Studio Bones. I don't know if it will be. That's a pipe dream, honestly. But if it does happen, you know, I would be all for it. I would love to see Studio Bones being able to have a very successful hit, a home run, so to speak, with this series, because it does have a very interesting vibe to it, the world, etc. So, with all that out of the way, the backstory to the series in terms of, like, who's making it, etc., let's actually talk about what this is fully about. Now, I want to be clear here, since this is episode one, and this is anime original, 
there is no spoilers technically. This is just full-on anime-only discussion, wondering where the story is going to go, and trying to piece together what we currently saw on screen in this 20-minute episode. So, right off the bat, the show actually kind of shocks you a little bit, because it, like, reveals that we're on Mars. Like, this whole bridge scene, if you didn't see this Mars pop up on the right... I know many people probably thought maybe this was placed in a post-apocalyptic Earth. That's what I get. Like, from this background scenery, from the way everything looks, it just looks like maybe it's Earth, but like hundreds of years in the future, where global warming, all sorts of stuff has happened, and just the Earth is a total mess, so to speak. That was the impression I got from the environment before it said we were, where we actually were, aka Mars. And so this is a perfect establishing shot to get people's attention, showcasing that this isn't necessarily a post-apocalyptic apocalyptic world it's more or less probably a dystopian future or a dysto or a utopia whatever it may be you know this is set on an entirely different planet which does open the door up to what happened to earth because that from my understanding, I rewatched the episode, but there is really no mentioning of Earth or what happened, how they even get here to Mars. We can only assume that, you know, humanity expanded into the stars. Yeah, we know that. But uh, it's not really explained, you know, why did they come to Mars or, you know, like, what happened to Earth? Is Earth even still around? Technically, I don't even think we got a year. Like, actually, what year we're in. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe they did, but I don't believe we even have a year date to where this series is actually taking place. But anyways, this establishing shot is really important to really set up where the world is at and taking place. We are on an entirely different planet, but it also is a planet that we all know, thanks to science, history, and all that type of stuff in actual our real world setting. So we know where Mars is, but technically how far away it is as well. Now, we also get this establishing shot where you see a bunch of workers that have like these weird lines on them and stuff, you know. They're working. They're doing these jobs outside and all that. And since that this is Mars, you might instantly assume maybe the reason why you have people that look like augmented or whatever is probably they need to be augmented to be able to survive on this planet. Because, you know, this is... Mars. This is, you know, a planet that's not as probably, you know, nice to humans, normal humans, because the air is probably going to be a little bit more toxic, etc. And it's clear that it hasn't been fully terraformed, because the ground is still red, dusted, and all that. You don't see much plant life whatsoever. There obviously is a lot of structures here, and we get to see, like, cities and stuff going on. That's really beautiful. But for our understanding, this can be just an entire dome. Like, the city over, like, landscape we see here could be a just straight-up dome city, like, in the sky is maybe simulated or whatever. We don't really know. The point of the matter is, is that, you know, it's clear that normal humans probably can't live on Mars. So they need to be augmented. So this kind of sets up to where there's like robots, androids, cyborgs, etc. And you're constantly guessing while this episode is you know, coming out and you get more footage, you're like, okay, so who's a normal human? Who is not? And eventually it's kind of revealed that people that are, I guess, robots, so to speak, or androids, they uh, need this, like, chemical called nectar, which looks like they're, like, putting a literal shot, like a syringe, in their neck or different places on their body to be able to charge themselves. Now, it's not necessarily clarified why they fully need this. All we do know from what this episode lets us know is that if you don't get this nectar injection, you will break down and die. We get to see an individual, like a background character, that, you know, gave up his nectar injection to uh, his female companion. And later that day, he just straight up died. He, I'm assuming, malfunctioned, and he died. So this implies that if you don't have that, you, you just you cease to exist, so to speak. And the way they're kind of handled, they're kind of taken out like garbage. Like, the, the bodies of these cyborgs or androids, so to speak, not even like cyborgs, androids, are put into like a dumpster bin and just thrown out. And it's just like, oh, wow, that's kind of that's cruel, especially with something with like sentient life. Kind of has life and all that. It's just like really messed up just seeing how that is handled. It shows the the social norms or just how this society works in the first place, how it treats androids and robots, and they don't treat them like actual people. Now, with all that being said, it's very clear our two main characters, okay? This character on screen, the one I kind of already showed you that was like in the red suit, um, they are most likely androids. And if not androids, they are cyborgs. And there is something that is mentioned very briefly within this episode, that there is a unique, different variation of these androids. They're called the the Neens, or Nines, whatever. Like, we know they're the Immortal Nine, but they're called Neens or something. And it's implied that maybe the Neens are, like, sent by aliens. So there is a 
like a like lore established to where there could be potentially aliens in this series or maybe some of the cyborgs or androids could be you know actual aliens and that that's pretty interesting honestly so we have that potential possibility opening up since we do know we're on the planet mars that is always theoretically could potentially happen within the story Anyways, the actual main objective of the story, which is what I gathered, it seems like our main two characters are hunting after the Immortal Nine. These individual robots or cyborgs, androids, we don't really have full clarification of what makes them so different. It's just they don't have to follow the necessary rules of no killing of humans, which is a typical traditional thing you would see in this type of setup with you know, storytelling. But what makes them different? There must have been something why they're called the Immortal Nine, etc. And so our main characters are hunting them. And that's really all we get. Like, that's really the only interest or I guess the introduction to the story that we get within this first episode there is little sprinkles of details here and there but it's really so sporadic you don't really know exactly what's going on besides what I just talked about now overall I think besides that, it is a solid first episode. Like I said, there is a lot of intrigue, a lot of mystery, and since this is, you know, an anime original, a lot of people I feel like are going to give it the benefit of the doubt and let this cook a lot longer than a normal anime because there is no established fan base. There is nothing that really has generated hype for this. It's just people going in blind and then seeing where it's going to take them. It's a blind roller coaster, and I like that. I like these type of shows. It leads to some of my favorite series of all time. I I believe Lycris Recoil that aired like last year or whatever wasn't that anime original like I, I could be wrong correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that was anime original as well and because of that you know we get constant like banger anime over the years that are just straight up anime original and really blow everybody away so hopefully Metallic Rouge is going to be that type of story. But I guess I'll leave it at that. I just I wanted to talk about it. Music is a banger, by the way. If you haven't heard the soundtrack, you really should. Oh my goodness. Like, the whole soundtrack that plays, like, in this sequence or whatever when they're fighting is so good. So, yeah. If you like cute girls, you like robots, you like futuristic dystopian futures with, like, you know, androids, etc., you're probably going to enjoy this. I'm assuming if you're a fan of Blade Runner or if you like Cyberpunk, this is also going to be one of those series for you as well. But I want to wrap it up there. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy my content, you know, please leave a like, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot. Chibi out.